Okay, so we're ready to make our guy walk, but um, not so fast, right? I knew there would be there'd be something we had to talk about before we got to that, and uh, that's what I want to do now is explain a little bit about how to make a walk track correctly, and uh, by that I just mean so that the feet don't slide whenever um, your character might be on the ground or whatever, walking on the horizon line or something. And so uh, whenever you build your walks, you want to you, when you build them, you want to plan it out ahead a little bit so that you make sure that the feet don't slide around and otherwise you'll be spending a lot of time fixing stuff instead of moving on to animate other stuff. So um, let me explain what this is, right? So we have the green check is the good walk and the red X is the bad walk. And these are sort of isolated. They're floating in space. There's no ground plane to provide any relative motion right now. So it's hard to tell really what the difference is between these two without the guides. And even with little guides on here, it's not that obvious unless we kind of take a closer look and examine just the feet. So I'm going to take a look at this, the good one here first. Um, you'll notice that there are red hash marks that are sort of like my, I call this like my, my track tracking markers or for the stride measurement, I guess you could say. And right now this is the contact position for the, the walk. I should pull down a little horizon line here. So we have that uh, happening and um, you notice as soon as the feet make contact with the ground and they, they move until they lift off, we have this little hash mark that's following them. What is this hash mark exactly doing? It's slicing through kind of the center line of the contact point of the foot. So no matter what angle this foot is at, it's going to be making contact with the ground at that point, more or less. It may not be like pixel perfect, but it's pretty good. So uh, I'm going to drill down into this a little bit and we'll take a look at how this is moving and what it's actually measuring. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hide everything else right now and let's just onion skin this out. I don't know how obvious that is to see. Well those are really hard to see those things. Uh, let me darken the background maybe will help. Oh or brighten it. There. So uh, if you look at these you'll notice that uh, there's two keyframes and a classic tween. On this, this is a symbol, so it's classic tween that's translating across the stage from uh, this point to this point. And there is uh, no easing happening here. It's, uh, you can see, I should actually say none, no ease at all, but the classic ease at zero is the same thing, I guess. So <clears throat> you can see that the spacing is perfectly equal, and that's just because the computer is doing all the work and just slicing that space up um, perfectly even. So uh, it's moving you know, the same amount of space from one frame to the next. That's exactly what we want to have happen. And so uh, if we know that that's the length of the stride and the amount of space that's need to be covered from one frame to the next, then whenever we um, come in and uh, design the foot and the leg sweep, we just want to make sure that that leg is basically intersecting with this uh, little tracking marker every time so that the foot is moving in an equal amount of space. And the reason is that whenever we want to animate him walking from point A to point B, all we need to do is set up point A and point B, let the computer do all the interpolation in between, and the feet will uh, not slide as long as the distance is correct. And, you know, that's just the simple math of that. You can eyeball it. I just eyeball it. But if you needed to, you could just, you know, do the math and say, well, it's so many pixels across so many frames. And I know if I want to take four strides, I just multiply that out by how many frames on the timeline and how many pixels he needs to cover and it, it works. Um, by comparison, we can look at this one and the difference is the tracking marker still tweening uh, in uh, an equal way from one position to the next. And it's, uh, I'm not seeing it there and why am I not seeing that? Oh, that's why. There. The, the, spacing, the spacing is still equal. Um, but this was the one I just animated by hand and I, I eyeballed it out and didn't didn't check it against any kind of um, tracking marker, I guess you could say. So the feet, if you look at this really closely, the feet don't actually line up. They, it starts off pretty good and then it ends pretty good. Oops. It starts off good and it ends good there and there. But 
every and, they, and it's not even that great. It's like a little bit off, but it gets really bad throughout. It's a little bit ahead of the marker, so the foot's moving faster here, and then it kind of now is a little behind, and then it's ahead again. So and then it's you know ends up where a little bit beyond. So it's kind of jittering a lot, and so whenever we if we want to actually track this in a way that um, on something that's actually moving, we can hide these guys and let me show you here. Let's look at the one that actually works. This one. All right. My little measurement. Okay. So he's going to walk from one side of the screen to the other here. And I this little yardstick here is just measuring the stride width length from one to the next. And then these little hash marks are, I guess, really just the center line between the two, just dividing it. So what that's really measuring is whenever his feet are at their widest. And if I drew a, a guide up here, this should run through the center of his his mass right there, and it does. So he's balanced. He's not, you know, leaning forward as he walks or whatever. Um, but let's let this play out and see. It's pretty good. The feet are not sliding. So what's happening is there's the this loop is happening inside of the symbol, and then on the outside, you know, if I remove the tween, he's just going to walk in place. So what I did was I just, um, the first frame he starts there and then I know how many steps he's taking. The last frame, he's way at the other end here, but he's still aligned with, uh, there, make it perfect. He's still aligned with that uh, hash mark. So now if I just do a classic tween, he will um, walk from point A to point B with it and his feet should stay pretty solid in place. Not really sliding too negligibly or really not at all, barely discernible. It looks like his feet are locked down. Um, the non-tracking one, look how that, how that plays out. So uh, I have the same thing happening. The His uh, tracking markers are pretty good in relation to where he starts his sequence. It's the same thing. He ends up in the same place at the end. Not even. Let's fix that there. And now let's see what happens in the middle in between where he's taking steps. Back up here. So you get this little hiccupy, there's like hitches and the feet are sliding. And that's not super bad, but it's enough to kind of break the illusion that it's like he doesn't look like he's really. So then what do you have to do to fix that? Well, you. At that point, you just have to go in and you're going to want to tween it so that his feet are actually on the ground. So, you know, I have to go in here and let's go find here from boom, that first stride. We'll just keyframe that out. That looks pretty good. And then we'll just keep on splitting the difference so that he always lines up where he needs to be. So I'm looking at not the red mark anymore because the red mark is off. I'm looking where his this crosshairs on his foot and that looks pretty good there but how about here it's way way off it should be on that mark so I need to nudge him over so that he lines up and then see how's that look that's a little bit off it's a little low but I'm not worried about that too much and then how about this one I don't want to find the center line there it's vertical through that Okay, and then how's that? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, now we need to split the difference here. So maybe I can get some, I want to do every single one. Maybe it'll kind of, that looks pretty good there. How about this one, that looks pretty good. That one can be nudged a little bit. So I'm spending, this is maybe a minute to fix that hiccup that stride and then I have to do it for every single other one and now I'm just spending one minute two minutes three minutes four minutes five minutes six I, you know, a minute for every stride to fix that maybe it'll take 20 seconds if I'm really fast but still that's like I'm spending my time now cleaning up a mess and not actually 
I'm doing kind of grunt work and it's not really that much fun. And I'd rather be animating and doing character performance and stuff, but now I have to tidy this up. And my, also, my timeline is going to be super uh, messy too, because it's like, well, where's, where are these strides? I mean, there's going to be keyframes all over the place here. Where, whereas, you know, if you do a little bit of planning ahead of time and build a walk that does track perfectly, then you, you have super clean timeline. You know exactly where you start and where you end, and you don't have to do any kind of fussing in between. So that's why. Uh, designing your walks to you know have the feet not slide and track correctly is is uh, a little bit more upfront planning but it just you know it means you don't have to do any work on the back end and huge life lesson there uh <laughs> with animation a little bit of planning up front always 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 will save you a way more work on the back end and uh that's a lesson that uh sometimes we have to learn over and over and over again but it's uh good to um consider that. Think about what you need to do before you do it a little bit and uh, it'll be a lot easier to do it.